Let's talk women talk. A Singaporean with a strong voice and insightful perspective, Faith Ng has brought many stories to life through her writing. Inspired by her own personal struggles and her observation of the world, Faith's work has shed light on many societal issues. We sat down one afternoon at Checkpoint Theatre to talk to this playwright about her life, her work, and how far she's come. I mean, I'm sure there has been so many memorable experiences, I can't even imagine, right? I mean, like seeing your play, what, where, like your, your words come to life, right? When, when do you discover writing? Actually, quite, quite early on in, in primary school, I started writing, and then in secondary school as well. After JC, I did a double major in theatre studies and literature. Okay. Yeah, because I, I couldn't decide. Yeah, um, I, I was so fascinated by just whatever went on uh, on stage. But at the same time, I wanted something more cerebral. Mm. Yeah, so I just I could never make up my mind and I just did both. Do you remember the first time you watched the play or because you, you just mentioned that you were always fascinated by yeah. what happened on stage. When did that fascination come about? It was when I was sec four. Funny enough, the, one of the literature texts that you study is Emily of Emerald Hill by mm. Stella Kahn. And it's about this woman, this Peranakan woman, who has been abandoned by her family. I understood and really related to her sense of desperation, that, that powerlessness where, where you, need to, you need to control something. So I remember feeling so heartbroken for her. Yeah, and, and I, I thought, wow, you know, this, this is a play. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. The magical moment. Mm. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about the inspiration of normal. Mm. Um, I know it was not entirely based mm. on uh, you being in the normal stream. Yeah. It was a, a manifestation of it, mm. but there were other elements in it as well, right? For the longest time, I think I took that if you're weird, it means there is something wrong with me uh, and I will never match up. When do you get the idea though? I think it's just along the way while growing up, people would say things like, she's just weird la, or uh, she's just slow la. These little impressions that people had of me, it, it built up. And I just thought that, yeah, I, I would always never be any good. I remember yeah, comparing the textbooks of the normal and express and the suggestion was that we were not capable of learning as much. What people believe that uh, normal students could achieve right then and then is, is stated for you. Uh, the, the more unspoken one would be the tone that people would talk about normal students. Somehow we were defective in a certain way. Uh, yeah, and I know a lot of the time people didn't mean harm. Mm. It's just that in that tone, in that register, you saw the bias. Mm. And also because it is repetitive throughout people, yeah. So you, you, you as an individual, you start to notice a pattern, right? And yes. therefore that influences the way you, you, it makes it obvious. Actually, maybe you don't feel anything, right. but because of that interaction. And also, I think it, it was the fact that even before I went to normal, uh, in primary school, there would be teachers who would go, uh, you better study hard or you will end up in normal. Yeah. And, and did any of that carry over to where you were in junior college? I really felt like I, I escaped from like the, the gallows or something that I got lucky, immensely lucky. The promise I made to myself was, you must never fall back to where you were yeah, in normal. But I was also very lucky because I found friends who were also trying to figure things out, like who they were, and it's not just me. And these were girls from the Express Dream, but they had these same insecurities and fears. And I think it just made me realise, because I think I myself had an impression of how Express students were supposed to behave. Yeah, so that, that was where I had to I had to check myself. So it's like you had your own kind of set of biases mm. in that sense. I mean, we yeah, all do. We all do, we, we all, all do. do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And also because um, in JC, I knew um, a friend. She was really just an incredible girl, bright. And she, she went on to uni and she, she couldn't cope. She, she killed herself. Yeah. Even she cracked under the pressure. I just felt it was sad. Yeah, and I really, really wanted to talk about these things. Yeah. What do you want to say though to, you know, to, to girls or boys out there who are in the normal stream mm. and who obviously feel like that, whether, like you said, people mean it or not, yeah. whether it comes from their peers, it comes from their parents, you know, people in general, or even the teachers? So many things. I have been teaching at a secondary school 
and um, there are some normal students in that class. Yeah, and I, I try to tell them so hard that yes, numbers are important, results are important, and if you if you are putting in effort and working hard and you achieve results in school, you should celebrate it. It is something to be proud of, but that there are other ways to 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 look at life. Yeah, and, and, and those are very simple things that cannot be quantified, like um, how how kind you are to, to your to your peers. All those things you, you can't be graded for. Yeah, but it doesn't they, show up on your results no, slip. No, yeah. it doesn't. Yeah, and, and it makes you who you are in, in life. And I think it's one of those things where you have to spend a lot of time with them and, and truly get to know them uh, as people and not just as students because they are so used to being talked down mm. or um, to, that they have to meet certain demands. Uh, that they have to fulfill certain things that are expected of them. So there are very few people who, who really take the time to, to talk to them yeah, and, and try to understand yeah, what they, they really care about, what they are worried about. Yeah, I think that's important. Well, you've obviously come a very, very long way. Um, you know, after your, your, the play that you wrote mm. was actually chosen to, uh, to I mean, Checkpoint Theatre, while you were a student, right, wanted to show your play, show, yes. show your work. That's right. how, yeah. how was it like for you at that point? It was really uh, exciting. When I, I wrote the, um, my first play, Women, it's about this teenage girl who comes back home after, after two years away and she, she comes home to her mom and her grandma and uh, they are in the midst of some sort of uh, squabble and then over the span of one night they discover certain things about each other And what inspired you to write that, that play? It was me looking at uh, women in Singapore and really wanting to understand them Yeah, so I guess I wanted to... To, to be that voice Yeah, and growing up with, uh, I spent a lot of time with my grandmother There were a lot of things that she, she, she did that were quite uh, perplexing and, and also hurtful uh, to my mom, and then uh, yeah, and so I saw suddenly like how one generation affected another, and uh, that the history it bleeds, you know. So it was just that that very interesting journey that I wanted to look at as as women, how we can we can really inspire each other, and but we can we can so easily just uh, we can break each other apart. Uh, yeah. quicker, faster. Than uh, any man can do to yeah, us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. We, it's either be very supportive and then when we come together, we do great things or we can destroy each other. Yes, yes, yes. yeah. So that was something that I, I really, yeah, I wanted to write about. How much of the issues of being a Singaporean do mm. you explore in, the, in your place? A lot, I think. Yeah, language is, is for me a, a big one. I didn't want people to make fun of Singlish because this is who you are and you're making fun of, of, of yeah, a part of yourself. It's part of our identity, yeah. very, very much so. I, I really feel so, I really do. I, I believe that so much. Yeah, it's like you, you go anywhere and you know you're like, you must be Singaporean, right? You know? <laughs> it's like... So I think I wanted really to show Singlish uh, as poetic. Sometimes it can be ugly and really crude. But sometimes it, it, it just is the right fit. I remember uh, my second play, For Better or For Worse, and um, it's about um, a married couple, and it's completely in Singlish and, and, and Teochew as well. I was sitting in the dark and I saw that people took out tissue paper to, to, yeah, to dry their tears. Yeah, and I, I felt, yeah, you know, that, that is that you don't have to, to make fun of Singlish. So I think that for me was a a moment where I felt, yeah, that I've done something good and there's more work to be done. And that you related, right? You've been yeah. able to relate to your audience yeah. or your audience has related to what you've written. And mm. So what are some of the issues that kind of inspire you? What are some of the issues that you're passionate about? I care a lot about, yeah, just ordinary people and what regrets they have and uh, what dreams they have. I just hope that they know that their struggles matter as well. Why is that reality so imperative to you? I think we have really become so desensitised to people around us. Because we are so surrounded by technology, just a lot of noise, I feel, out there. When we read about something that can be very hard-hitting, 
we, we no longer feel anything. And even when normal opened, um, we had this uh, young boy who was helping us. And I remember he just rattled off in a very absent-minded way. He said, oh yeah, in my school, yeah, a lot of people also commit suicide. And then I just was like, but, but don't, you, don't you feel, you know, and yeah, don't you feel so sad uh, that, you know, life is reduced to this. And then he just shrugged and said, yeah, but Singapore, what? What happened to the, the empathy, yeah, and the, the compassion, yeah. The it, ability to feel. Yeah, exactly. Think, it's almost like the emotion is now an emoticon. It's not really an, like a real emotion anymore. It's just, Yeah, know. exactly, yeah. And, and sometimes I, I think a play is where, where people just pause. You have to learn to listen, actively listen, and, and question and observe. It's so magical to, to watch people come alive, the actor giving his or her time. It's an exchange that I'm giving you my time and you're giving me yours. And uh, let, let's, let's learn something from each other, you know. Let's, let's tell this story. And I just find that so powerful. Almost yeah. liberating as well. Yeah, I, I just, yeah. I, I love it. I really do. I remember I had this conversation with my friend. She said theatre is one of the very few places where uh, everybody is accepted. What race you are, what language you speak, where you came from, what gender you like. It's so important, this, this industry, it, uh, yeah, that there is a space for, for people to, to, to belong. Because increasingly, those spaces are becoming rarer and harder to find. And also, I will always be very passionate about writing about women in Singapore. It's about the, the challenge when, when you, you want to fulfil your dreams and every woman at some point will have to make their decision how much time do I dedicate to my family and how much time to my work and it's, it's never possible to, to have that balance like even until now I, I do feel that uh, as a woman uh, you are looked at in a certain way there are all these assumptions that because I, I look young because I'm a girl I may not be respected as much uh, and unfortunately then there are certain things I have to learn like uh, adopting a lower tone or I'm not smiling so much yeah that, that I this feel is annoying that you have to kind of change yeah, who you that are men to... don't have to deal with yep. yeah and even in terms of my writing that oh because you are more emotional and so then the stories you tell may not have that much craft a lot of people will say oh the your plays are are, you, are based entirely on your life. What is so difficult? Just you're just writing about your life. Uh, yeah. Un, un those the most powerful place though, when it's like something that's personal and something that you mm. can relate to, or you so, won't write it, right? Exactly. And because it's not just about writing something. You've got yeah. to write something that you believe in. If you yes. don't believe in it, you can't expect your audience to believe it. Exactly. Right? It's the same as acting. It obviously isn't easy being a playwright. I yeah. mean, you also teach. Yes. You yeah. teach at NUS, you mm -hmm. teach in a secondary school, yeah. you're also the engagement yeah. uh, uh, person, how, yeah. ex engagement executive yeah. at Checkpoint Theatre. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about Checkpoint yeah. Theatre. One thing that I, I find really uh, sets us apart is our focus on uh, works that are original. We don't borrow from, like, say, the West, but making sure that that story is well developed mm. and well crafted that can stand on its own on an international level yeah i don't really like it when people say uh, oh my support just because it's local because i i don't think that's how we should be looking at at, at art yeah it should be is this a good piece of work or not yeah and, yeah yeah i mean definitely you should want to support your own mm. but at the same time you don't want to say oh just because you're local you're quite good lah. yes you know what I mean? You want to go, oh, this is a local piece and it stands on an international yes. stage. And you know what, frankly, I wouldn't know the difference. Yes, yeah I, I, yeah, I really believe that so much. Yeah, so we spend a lot of time and we are quite known for um, our text. Yeah, making sure that it's really, yeah, really carefully thought through. Very cool. Yeah. And um, what is your, what is your, your dream for Checkpoint Theatre? Sometimes I think what's well, Checkpoint Theatre's dream for me, <laughs> really, because um, they've, they've been challenging and pushing me every year without fail. I remember um, telling my director, uh, Claire Wong, please don't make me speak on stage, I am just a writer. Oh. And, then, and then she said, uh, there's this, uh, this show where you have to do a post-show dialogue, you have to go on stage and the audience will ask questions, you have to answer the questions. And I was like, no, please, I can't, I'm so shy. 
she just looked at me and she said, just be professional. And that, that, that word, you know, it really struck me because as a writer at that point, I was still very emotional and I realised that it is a profession. Um, it is work and there is a work ethic that comes with it. Yeah, yeah. so I... that Whether you fear it or you not, have to do it. you have to yeah, do it. Yeah, it's your responsibility. Correct. So I went yeah. on stage, wow, I was so nervous. And, but I, yeah, it was, I, I learned so much from that. And, and now I, I am giving so many talks. And, uh, Look I, at you, wow. I know, right? Fantastic. Yeah, and I'm an introvert, okay? And you're lecturing. Yeah, so <laughs> as much as I am making the art, I, I think the, the art and the, the people in art are making me. <laughs> yeah, it's just been such a remarkable journey. It took me a while to realize that all my insecurities and all my flaws, they actually uh, made me a better person because I, I could understand where people were coming from when they, when they felt lesser. I was always challenging myself because I knew that I, I wasn't up to par yet and, and then in that way I, I kept making sure that I, I made improvements. I, I wasn't stagnating. Yeah. Oh, very, very insightful yeah. <laughs> for all the budding writers out I there. I hope so, I hope yeah, so. Yeah, no, for yeah. sure. I mean obviously it's not an easy journey, no, right? No, it's not, it's not. What yeah. do you think um, you've learned from this, obviously you're still very young, but what have you learned, you know, mm. uh, being a writer and, and being involved so much in, in, in Checkpoint Theatre mm. and being a playwright? Mm. One of the most important things I've learned quite recently is that I don't have to limit myself and just put a full stop to the things that I do. There are many sides of me and uh, I have many passions and beliefs. I don't have to just be one thing, so I can teach. I can do marketing, maybe even direct. I want to always push myself out of my comfort zone. Yeah, so it's something yeah, that has really opened my eyes. So, Faith, what is empowerment to you? Deciding for yourself what you want to do in your life, setting your own goals. Nobody can speak for you, you know, it's, it's the, the journey that you have to run on your own. That it's very important to listen to your own voice. And it's only growing up uh, and, and, and through writing and through interacting with people uh, that I realise I can break those ceilings. It's not too late because, yeah, I just I hear that so much. Well, Faith, thank you so much. This was an extremely insightful conversation, but not just that. I think, you know, really appreciating your, your hard work and I think really from the bottom of my heart, thank you for being one of the very strong voices for the Singaporean narrative. Faith's success has definitely not come easy and she has proved that we should never put a limit on ourselves. Her inspirational voice will always be a reminder that we are all not perfect and we should embrace and celebrate being different. Thank you so much for watching Women Talk. For more stories of inspirational women, please subscribe here.